Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very special episode because this is a classic book review. This is a book that will remain a classic for all time. Possibly one of the most important and influential books ever written. And I consider it an honour, a challenge and something of a laxative to be in the position of having to review a book of this stature amongst such august personages as yourselves. I really hope I have the intelligence and book smarts to do this book the justice that it deserves. Because, well, frankly, Ibsen Schmibsen, Chekhov Schmekhov, Tolstoy Schmolstoy, Shakespeare Shakespeare. This is a book that was gifted to me by none other than the Titan of Tartan, the Ginger Winger, the Scot who ain't hot, the Hatter of Chatter, the Purveyor of Prism. That's a book he wrote, it's up there. I give you The Pooh Book. Yes, that's right. This is How to Avoid Boredom on the Loo While You Make Nasty Smells. And it is a work of such surpassing excellence that its creator has chosen to go uncredited for reasons of modesty. Now, I must quickly point out that this entire review is coming to you because it was requested. I do take requests, and this is the first one. Um, and this came to me via Instagram because I recently discovered that there's this thing called the internet. It's all very technical and complicated and confusing, but I'm doing my best to wrap my aged brain around it. Um, so I signed up for this Instagram thing, um, and I'm still figuring it out. So I haven't really done very much exciting on there yet, but a few people have decided to follow me. And one of my followers, not to sound too much like Jesus, although obviously the resemblance is uncanny, um, but uh, one of my followers is Ange with an E, who is something of a legend in the booktube world. She's kind of a superhero, but I'm not going to go on too much about her now because this is my channel and it's all about me. Um, but Ange, well, I'll show you. Can you see? Probably not. Um, <clears throat> And neither can I, because I'm blind. Bear with me. Ange says, please do a review of the poo book. And she's followed it up with a picture of a poo. So so anyway, um, thank you very much, Ange, um, for setting me the task of reviewing this important literary work. Um, this is a book that, at first glance, may seem a little bit frivolous. It may seem like a children's book. It's got this very thick cardboard cutout cover. And I wrongly assumed when I first began reading this book that um, all of the pages would be the same thickness as this cover and that it would be like, like a children's book with about 15 or 20 pages all made out of cardboard. And that would be it. But no, this is a book that actually has substance. It has fibre. <laughs> and we all need fibre when we're doing a poo. Now, obviously, I haven't read the whole book yet. Um, the reason being that you can only read this when you're doing a poo. And that's the law, by the way. And I haven't done enough poos since receiving this book to finish the book yet. But what I can tell you is it's a book with many, many pages and lots of substance within. Look, I will show you. See, this is the uh, flicker book effect. Um, if I turn my back on you, I apologise if that seems rude, um, but it will give you a quick look at the contents of the book. Here we go. 
See, there's all sorts of stuff in this book. Also, this book doesn't have a one-track mind. It has variety. So um, there's a mixture of stuff. There are jokes. Um, there are quotes. Um, I can't see myself ever spending hundreds of thousands on anything that doesn't come with a toilet, Dr. Dre. So there are things like that where you just get um, witty or amusing quotes, or in that case, a quote that I don't fully understand. Things like this is a couple of pages of um, synonyms for toilet, like bog, um, throne room, guard robe, honey bucket, head, john, powder room, convenience, shitter, all of that sort of thing. Just um, an amusing collection of synonyms. Um, you also get um, interesting fun facts. Factoids. Um, the oldest known functioning loo is around 4,000 years old. You can see it in the Minoan Palace of no Knossos. Oh, why did I choose a fucking foreign quote? Um, it's a place in Crete. Um, you can see it in Crete, but you can't use it, which I think is a terrible shame. You also have little sort of quizzy type things. Um, in a public convenience, which loo is the cleanest? And then, rather annoyingly, the answer is printed upside down. That's fine. Um, you can print the answer upside down if you like, but it's written in a font that only ants can read. So... Bear with me while I uh, use the uh, monocle of magnificence. Oh, it's still upside down, of course. Um, answer, the first cubicle in any row of public loos is the least used and therefore the cleanest. So there you go. So you get some little fun facts, some quizzy type things. Um, let's have a look. Um, a human expels three pounds... What? A human expels three pounds of poo a day. I'm lucky if I expel that much in a week, surely. Compare that to an elephant's 300 pounds. Wow. An elephant shits out a whole me every single day. That's scary for many, many reasons, but the main one being that I weigh so much. Um, we'll gloss over that. It's 300 pounds of magnificence, though, you must admit. There are there are some word searches. In 2016, the Italian sculptor Maurizio Catalan created a work he named America, an 18-carat solid gold toilet that he encouraged art fans to use when they visited the gallery. It hit the headlines in 2019 when it was stolen from an art exhibition at Blenheim Palace. There's so much to enjoy in that little bit of factoidness. Um, first of all, that someone actually made a toilet, a solid gold toilet out of 18 karat gold. That's impressive. Uh, the fact that people were encouraged to piss and maybe even shit in it in public while it was on exhibition at a gallery. That's impressive. I would have partaken of that invitation. Um... And the fact that someone stole it. Someone stole a solid gold toilet full of other people's shit. I just find this fascinating. I want to know who stole it. In fact, I want someone to make a film about the theft of the 18 carat solid gold toilet full of shit. Um, here's one. In Singapore, it is illegal not to flush a public loo. There is a fine of $150 if you are caught so don't get caught. And there's an illustration here. Now, I'm going to say that this makes this entire book problematic because we're talking about Singapore and the illustration is a person who is clearly not from Singapore. Now, granted, um, it's possible that in Singapore they have police officers um, who are from the Western world, but I doubt if any of them have that complexion. So I'm going to accuse this book of orange washing, because clearly this police officer is the same colour as Donald Trump, which is a colour that doesn't exist anywhere in nature. Here's another bit of fun. Uh, the ancient Romans wiped their bottoms with a sponge on a stick called a tessorium. The tessorium was shared among users in communal toilets. Now, I knew the first part of that. I was aware that they had a sponge on a stick. I was not aware that they shared it. That is an extraordinary thing, even for an ancient Roman because it doesn't make any sense. Once you have smeared the sponge with your own shit, why would someone else want to use the same sponge and smear your shit onto their dirty butthole? 
Please, if you can explain this, um, give me a comment or two about this. Um, have you shared a shit sponge? Um, and if so, um, was it successful? Did it work? Did you end up with a cleaner bottom or did you end up with twice as much shit on your bottom? Um, this is obviously a very scatological video and so at this stage I feel I must apologise for all the um, scatological references and indeed for my multiple uses of the word shit. <laughs> there are jokes in here. Poo jokes aren't my favourite but they're a solid number two. My wife and I were married in a toilet. It was a marriage of convenience. Tommy Cooper. In Switzerland, you aren't allowed to flush a loo after 10pm, and men aren't supposed to urinate standing up after 10pm. The Swiss never cease to amaze me. This is, this is a really fun book. I could actually, I could easily spend a considerable amount of time on the loo reading this, even when I had finished pooing. Um, it does become a little bit addictive. To kill bacteria effectively after using the loo, you need to wash your hands with soap for a minimum of 20 seconds. Only 5% of all people do so. I suspect a larger percentage do now. And on that note, I'm going to call it a day. Simon, thank you very, very much for giving me such an interesting and entertaining book to read while I'm on the crapper. And Ange, Thank you very much for requesting it. And everyone else, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already, you know what to do. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you next time. See you later. <laughs>